Welcome to the Biz Bash podcast, where we make biz strategy a piece of cake. I'm Elizabeth. And I'm Cammie, but you might know us better as Eliza and Calligraphy and Cammie Monet. We want to help you, our fellow stationers, artists, and calligraphers, confidently build a profitable and personality-driven creative biz. We're here to share our honest-to-goodness advice and actionable strategies for ambitious artists. So put on your party hat, quit being a procrastinator gator, and let's get this party started. Hello, you guys, and welcome to episode 10 of the Biz Bash podcast. We are so jazzed for today's episode um, because we're going to be coming out with you with a lot of good info on how to find vendors, printers, manufacturers for your products, all those good things. And it is launch week. Sorry, I had to sing it. I had to do it. It's launch week (laughs) for our A to Z directory, which is an amazing resource. We are so excited to officially reveal to you guys. Um, And we'll talk more about the A to Z directory after we dive into this week's topic. Um, So we're going to share like the difficulties we've had with finding vendors, um, the struggles we had starting out, things we do to actually find um, trustworthy vendors, trustworthy printers, and what that process kind of looks like and how you can skip all of those things by signing up for our membership site, the A to Z directory. (laughs) Heck yes. I'm so excited for this. Um, And while you were saying all of that, my cat was coming in and walking everywhere. So I was like, oh gosh, please don't step on anything. Like... (laughs) Don't do anything. Um, but yeah, I'm so glad that you touched touched on that real quick because the A to Z directory is our big thing that we've been working on lately that it's Tuesday of launch week by the time you guys are listening to this. So you have the ability to go and sign up now if you want to. But before we do give you that, uh, the information on all of that, Cami and I are going to disclose like what can you guys actually do to find vendors. So Cami, why don't you go ahead and start off with these few bullet points that you've kind of written down of the first steps to take? Yes. I just want to tell you guys about, I mean, starting out, starting out with my business, I think that was one of the biggest question marks above my head was where do I get my stuff printed? How do I even find print vendors? And I remember I did have a little bit, um, I guess, extra background knowledge on this because my dad already did um, prints. So I knew like the types of printers he used. And so I wanted to find an equivalent of that to where, where I lived in Orlando. So I was looking for local printers. So I was literally just Googling wholesale printers, printers near me, which obviously is going to bring up a lot of things like printers for sale at Staples and stuff, which is not what you're looking for. <laughs> I honestly, I didn't even know what to Google to even begin this search. Um, so I think I I took a day and I literally drove around and found all these print shops, just made notes of them, called them to see if they even offered the type of printing I was looking for for our prints, and then just went and visited and explained kind of a little bit about my business, the watercolor prints, what I liked, what did they offer. And it was a really fun day. So <laughs> um, that was how I kind of started out. And I worked with a local printer for the first few months of my business. And I love their quality. Their um, name is RT Art here in Orlando, if you're looking for that. Um, And they're a fine art printer. Um, They're really easy to work with. They did all my scans for me as well, because I didn't know how to scan in any of my artwork. So I would just take my originals there. They would scan them in for an extra $10 and then do all the Um, printing, um, (laughs) which now I do that myself. So it's kind of laughable thinking back on this. Right. (laughs) So the turnaround time was horrible, though. It was about two to three weeks before I ever got prints back, which honestly, if you're in this industry, you know, two to three weeks is just not a good turnaround time. Um, So I feel like that was kind of a problem starting out. Elizabeth, um, for your first print vendor, who did you start out with? (laughs) Well, I want to ask you a question really quick. Oh, Is that yes, okay? okay. I'm gonna, oh, yeah. I want to before I dive into that. I wanted to follow up and ask, like, when you were walking into these local shops. Well, first of all, were you scheduling anything ahead of time, or were you just kind of visiting? And then, second of all, like, what was their reaction to you when you were kind of like doing your research? I'd love to hear. Okay, so I didn't schedule anything ahead of time. I literally just walk walk in and be like, "Hey, oh," and I had a list of questions ready too. I had a list of okay. questions. Do I need to provide my own paper? What kind of paper do you guys have? A lot of times I think I really overwhelmed them because I had so many questions. (laughs) They were probably just used to people wanting brochures or something random. But I was like, no, this is serious business. Okay. 
<laughs> um, yeah. asking them their turnaround time, the file type setup, because I didn't know I didn't know anything about anything then, <laughs> to be honest. Um, the finishing options, like cost, all those types of questions. And yeah, I, w- I was just literally walking in and being like, hey, what's up? I'm an artist. Here's what I do. And I didn't offer invitations at this point. So that wasn't necessarily what I was looking for. I was mostly looking for art prints and um, a really high quality, like fine art piece like Jaclay's. Um, yes. And then, you know, one of my biggest tips for finding local vendors is don't be afraid of the places that look super sketchy and not cute on the outside because that is where the really good printers are. Their websites probably suck, <laughs> but if you go in there and talk to them, they're the ones who are like the OGs of printing and they know what's up for sure. Um, but typically the places aren't cute. So if you see one of those like weird looking hole in the wall printers, they probably do amazing work. So just stop in and see like it's so much easier than going to their website. And I feel like I feel like every single place has horrible websites. So just going in and getting samples, talking to the person is going to be the best way to find out if they're really a good fit for your business. Yeah, absolutely. And it all just starts with a discussion and kind of like putting yourself out there. So I know this is definitely a little hard for me too. I can get shy and awkward in person as I'm sure. I mean, I know that you probably do, Cammie. I know that you probably- I am never awkward, Elizabeth. I oh, beg your pardon. Uh, <laughs> I could just imagine you being like, and I have 10 questions to ask you. So just like, hold on a second. Like, while I read all these. <laughs> oh my gosh. One of the printers I went to, they had like four cats there and they had dogs. What? And they also partnered with like a rescue company. So they had like a bunch of animals and I was just so distracted by all the pets that I I didn't get any of my questions. I was like, can I just pet the kitty? What does the kitty do? Oh my gosh. So that one did not go over well. But they gave me a ton of samples. So that was great. <laughs> what a funny business model. Like we're a print company that pairs with a pet shelter. Yeah, it was very interesting. <laughs> they actually so you- did really good work, but oh well. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's it's such a great place to start to just really look locally. Guys, there's so many options besides like Jeff's vendors that we've used or we've recommended. Like, it's great to be able to do your own research. It's time consuming, though. We're going to be touching on that later. Um, But Cammie, you asked earlier about me finding my first print vendors. So I'll touch on that really quick. Um, Mine were actually for my own wedding invitations. So I was literally just Googling um, like wedding invitation printers in Denver because that's where I was living at the time, Denver, Colorado. But I also found an online uh, vendor that I used at the time as well called catprint.com. So we're keeping with the pet theme here. (laughs) Of course. (laughs) Um, And I wanted for my invitation, so I had like no concept of how different print methods worked. I just had no idea. So I wanted digital printing. Like I wanted a watercolor floral design that I had painted with letterpress. So you're stacking two types of printing, which means you have to get the digital layer printed one one place if you know if the print shop doesn't offer both types of printing. And then you have to go to the other print shop the letterpress shop to have them do the letterpress. So I was like trying to do this literally as a total noob. I didn't even like know what layers in Photoshop were. I was like doing all this stuff by myself. Um, So it just started with a simple Google search. So I found catprint.com. So they did the digital part of my invitations, my floral design that I had. And then I found another uh, printer, my letterpress printer called Banshee Press. They're in Denver, Colorado. They actually just closed this past October, though. So after six years of business, yeah. Um, And that was kind of crazy because I was like doing my research yesterday, you know, for our notes and things. And so I went to their website and I was like, oh, my gosh, what? Like, (laughs) they're not even in business anymore. But I also just picked their brains and asked them so many questions because I, I didn't understand what I was doing. Like, they had to finalize the files for me and vectorize them and prep them for print. So I did pay them for their time to do that. Like I was able to give them the file I had designed and they did it for me. Um, But the problem was that obviously there's all these like technicalities I don't understand. So their software didn't have the print type that my software originally had when I designed the invitation. So they had to retype it in their own type 
or yeah, in their own font, like one that matched similarly that they had paid for, had access to Mm -hmm. or whatever. And she left the afternoon out of E (laughs) or left the E out of afternoon. Excuse me. I just said it wrong. Um, And so I totally did not catch that. She sent the file. She was like, how does this look? And when she said, how does this look? I was looking at how does the type compare to what I had before? I wasn't looking for spelling errors because I thought she just copied and pasted. Um, So yeah, they uh, printed letterpress wedding invitations uh, that way (laughs) with the spelling error. And I literally cried when I got them back um, because my mom and I had to pay for them to do it again because they had no like formal proof process or anything. So basically like, the responsibility fell on us and the lady who was like the head of the shop was super pregnant at the time and like I think just super overwhelmed and it was just kind of one of those experiences where it's like oh my gosh I'm such a newbie I just remember feeling so like overwhelmed inferior kind of embarrassed like the entire time to be honest (laughs) through that process I mean honestly that's a feat in itself like designing your own wedding wedding invitations and then doing the double printing because even that like I have to sit and think if I'm doing that for a bride okay how am I going to set up this file to do this to do this you know it's like a a process so like without you knowing anything I'm like dang (laughs) and also I have a question for the paper type from cat print did you have to coordinate with the letterpress printer to find out if that paper would work for letterpress or did you just kind of get lucky (laughs) or did you even think about that (laughs) <laughs> oh my gosh. So this is where it also is even more hilarious because I did like an off-white like cream paper and I didn't understand that for letterpress printing you need like a soft cotton that'll leave an impression. Like I had no idea. So no, the paper types didn't match. That's what was funny is that was like an off cream and the Letra paper they used at the printing shop was a bright white. So when I did get my invitations back, the ones that had gone through the digital first were actually a completely different shade from the RSVP cards. Oh um, my god. <laughs> oh yeah, I, have, I had literally no idea. Like what I was doing, like didn't know how to order file or sample packs from these print companies or anything like that, or even consider that I would have to ask something like that. So it actually worked out in my favor, I think, because even though I had to pay for that to be done again, which by the way, the letterpress printer had to find someone local to print the digital stuff first. And then she had to print the letterpress. Um, All the paper ended up matching (laughs) because she was able to like use the paper she had in house. So it worked out in my favor. It was an expensive mistake because I think, you know, we paid $500 again to have them reprinted or whatever it was. Um, She was nice enough and kind enough to find that digital printer to organize that for us. But Oh my gosh, like looking back at that, like the saying out of the frying pan into the fire was so applicable because like not only did I have no idea what I was doing, but then there was like this huge mistake that happened. I like scream oh cried my in my gosh. car, like in front of my mom. Because <laughs> <So, laughs> my I mom was like, it. yeah, my mom was like, oh, she kind of like did the gasp and like my heart sank and she was like, they left the E out of afternoon. And I was oh. like, no. Nah! I like literally <laughs> like freak out. Oh my gosh. I'm getting sweaty thinking about this story. Like, dear Lord. <laughs> I am too. It's like it's I laugh about it now because it's like that stress of just like planning a wedding and everything yeah. else that's going on. Like that's why guys, when you like if stuff gets messed up on your back end, try to fix it before you like tell your client or you're gonna give them a heart attack. Like <laughs> I know. It's so funny. I feel like you could almost use this story in your copy of why he became a stationer. You're like, I won't misspell anything. (laughs) Yeah. That's why we have so many proofs, you know. (laughs) My proofing process is intense, guys. I will share that proofing form at some point for Biz Birthday Bash because I just think it's super important for everyone to see it. (laughs) But yeah. anyways, that's kind of like a little bit of diversion from specifically finding vendors but like the moral of the story is I was just like I was beyond lost I I I knew nothing like you know nothing Jon Snow is like what I think of from Game of Thrones like when I think of me printing my own wedding invitations (laughs) oh my gosh yeah I mean I knew nothing with the art prints like I wasn't even doing invitations um but when I was doing the art prints 
He's like, do you want the background removed or no? And I was like, no. And of course I wanted the background removed, but I didn't <laughs> realize that at the time. So all the prints were like kind of yellowy with the paper texture. Oh, and then no. now I reprinted them all because I removed the background myself. And oh my gosh, it was just, and then the paper, I was like, I like this matte paper. And then I didn't realize there was other types of paper. I mean, I like their paper, but I could have known more if I just done more research on my own. Yes. Um, but yeah, I also like I went to a couple of vendors who I know I knew that other local stationers used for their invitations to just talk with them. One of the printers I went to was literally in this super weird warehouse. It like didn't have a sign or anything like in, and I walk in and it's like half auto shop because her husband did like car stuff and then half print shop, but also like a babysitting room because her kids were there. So it was just like three chairs, a huge like car garage and then like like kids toys and I was like what in the heck is this and she just gave me a ton of samples and honestly it wasn't a good fit for what I was looking for it was more commercial printing I think yeah which is something else you want to if you're looking for local printers like there's going to be more commercial printers who are printing like 5,000 print run things for you know charities and that kind of stuff um businesses but not necessarily like specialty printing like invitations like there's a huge difference in those types of papers and printing processes and I think she was more along those lines, but also did wedding invitations. But honestly, the whole place was just super weird to me. Um, <laughs> and I didn't move forward with them. But <laughs> man, finding vendors. But there are some there are some pros to finding local vendors. You know, we'll talk about finding other vendors outside your area as well. But the, the pros to finding local vendors is you can save on shipping. And that was something I was really concerned about for some reason. Mm, um, interesting. I don't have to pay to ship all these papers because I was thinking... I don't know. I think I just got stuck in the rut that my the way my dad did his like he goes and picks up his prints. He does a test print and a quality control and like sees them, changes the colors. And I kind of thought that's how the process would be for me. But now it's totally not. I have a way more efficient process. It's not so like like my dad's printing process was very in depth, like going back and forth to the place. And that's just all I knew. So I kind of mirrored it off that. But it is nice to have that printer that you can talk to and and not just like email with, but talk to in person and be like, well, I like this, but can you change this about this? You know, and just have a little bit more of a, a connection with them. Um, you can work with that person one-on-one for bespoke types of jobs and ask them questions about the process that you don't understand. And they're going to be able to know more about the printing expertise than you are possibly uh, if you're just starting out. So I, that's why I was really looking for local. Um, but then of course I ended up going with people online that I found that I like way more, <laughs> but yeah. they're local printers. I'm doing, um, air quotes, but not local to me. So, right. That and that, this, everything you just talked about goes to the point that what one person's process is, is not the same for everyone. So like what your dad was doing was, more than what you need in your personal business. And I can totally understand for your dad, because when you're printing two feet by three feet prints of these beautiful paintings with complex colors and designs, like I understand why he would have to go in to check the color. Um, Like Jake Weidman, the master penman, he and his wife have done stories behind the scenes too of how when they print their G-Clays, it's a back and forth process. Like they want to make sure that the colors are as close to possible as the original. Um, And that's just not necessary for our businesses because we're operating on a different level and doing something entirely different. Mm -hmm. It is a totally different process. Like now I'm not as concerned if my colors are as close to the original I painted as possible. In fact, I might change the colors digitally myself, you know, like I don't, I don't necessarily care that much about that element Yeah. um, because I, you know, the original is awesome, but I can change the colors and tweak them to my liking or how I think the print process needs to look. So yeah, I don't need that super in-depth printing um, process of color checks and stuff. I think that would drive me insane at this point anyway. Right. I mean, it's a lot of time that we don't really have because we're managing our own stuff. (laughs) Yeah, it is true. And yeah, things like wedding invitations. I mean, and and letterpress, you can't really do a ton of test prints. I mean, I guess you can. I don't really know. I haven't done a ton of letterpress printing. But if you're going back and forth with the printer, just adds on a whole other level test the color but you could not like manufacture multiple plates to test designs because that would be so expensive (laughs) 
Yeah. And that's why you want to find a printer that you know and trust that they're going to provide great work the first time. You don't need to go back and keep looking over their shoulder and making sure exactly what you want. You know, you need to trust them. Just like with our clients designing invitations. I don't want them looking over my shoulder and doing test prints. I want to, you know, get it right the first time. They trust me and they know it's the best um the best possible product, essentially. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, the one Mm -hmm. other thing I will say, because we're talking about um, local vendors, is that I actually had, (laughs) we're going to talk a little bit about customer service too, guys, in terms of like vendor relationships and like why that's so important. Um, But I actually had one printer like mess up the timeline of an order for me. This was another scream cry moment for me, guys, by the way. (laughs) And I had to like within 12 hours, like find somebody local here in Marietta, Georgia, who could like print these identical. It was like these folios um, that I did for a wedding, print them for me that same business day. I was everyone's nightmare client. I was that person who walked in and was like, so, hey, you don't know me. (laughs) Here's the deal. (laughs) Like, I really need your help doing this. And Their customer service was phenomenal. And I wouldn't have known about them before if I didn't have this crisis. Um, So in some ways, I'm thankful because I'm like, okay, I have an awesome connection with these people here now. I brought them donuts the next day. I was like, you guys deserve this. They stayed an extra hour to print my stuff. Like their customer service was above and beyond. It was absolutely amazing. I just had to throw that in there because it was a great local experience for me. Yeah, that is awesome. That is so awesome. See, and that's another great thing about local people is that you can kind of go face to face with them, talk about things like you know, when I'm ordering stuff online from printers, sometimes I don't get all the samples or I or like when I didn't know what I didn't know when I was doing my first wedding invitations. Oh my gosh, this poor bride. I mean, <laughs> they still were pretty and she loved them. But oh my Lord, I got the ugliest envelopes, like office envelopes, because I didn't know where to get like cute wedding envelopes. No. And so they were like, <laughs> oh, like the white, ugly, and like this beautiful watercolor invitation. And I sent her those stupid white envelopes because I was like, well, these are cheap. So I wasn't, I wasn't charging <laughs> enough. Oh, I hope she doesn't listen to this because now I, I just feel like an idiot. Now I know where to get envelopes. Um, But yeah, like if you don't have these good vendors in place, then you're not going to be able to be able to deliver a better product, a better experience for your client. And gosh, I just Still, this like haunts me to this day about those envelopes. Like I wake up and I'm like, the envelopes. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know what I did for my wedding? I bought all of mine from Paper Source. So talk about paying a pretty penny for your envelopes because guys – don't buy stuff for your clients at paper source. That's all like retail <laughs> value that you're paying. <laughs> yeah, you are a business. You need to be buying stuff wholesale and the agency directory will have lots of wholesale resources for you. But we'll talk more about that. Talk more about that shortly. <laughs> yes. Heck yes. Okay. What do you want to touch on next? We have quite a few things to still go through. We're very passionate about this topic, clearly. <laughs> okay. Let's um, talk about some other ways we find vendors and then we can talk about the things we look for when choosing them. So let's talk about other ways. Let's see. Where are my notes? Oh my gosh. You know, I got to have my notes. Creeper mode, guys. Say it with me. Creeper mode. Okay. A lot of people already put out the printers that they use and love already. They're already out there. You just got to be a creeper and find them, you know? (laughs) Like, think about, like, I tag vendors on my my Instagram stories and on my post. A lot of other stationers, artists, product makers do this as well. They'll be like, oh, I just got these envelopes in from whatever. Love them. And then you can find them and use them and research them and see if they're a good fit for you as well. You just got to be aware of, like, the things people are already talking about. Um, Because if someone loves a printer, they're going to talk about them. So, Going in this creeper mode, finding those things people are already talking about is a great way to find vendors as well. But you got to do your research. Make sure they're a good fit for your business and your aesthetic too. Like don't just blindly use everyone's other vendors because they said it. So Yeah, totally. um, I I actually have definitely tagged vendors and posts and stories in the past. So when someone comments on that post and is like, where did you get these envelopes? And I'm like actually I tagged them (laughs) you should just tap the photo to see and this is like me speaking with my eyes getting all like bulgy and crazy (laughs) I I know this face so well (laughs) yes you You do tap it (laughs) oh 
Oh, yeah. So just going into creeper mode, being observant, like already taking notice of who people are tagging or, you know, on on like styled shoots, they'll tag the vendors as well, like the printers a lot of the times or like the sources for things. So just something to keep in mind. And then what you were talking about before, what I said about asking specific questions. Um, Obviously, a lot of us are in Facebook groups for artists, makers, stationers. Um, So what I was going to say is when you're asking questions, don't just be like, what printer do you guys use and expect everyone to just lay out all their sources? You know, you need to do your research and find these on your own or get the A to Z directory. And if you're asking questions like that, I would just make them very specific. Like, I mean, I've asked for help before on like getting um, an invitation that was digitally printed with handmade on handmade paper, as well as foil printing on top of that. Is that even possible? And do you know someone who does this? Because I cannot find anyone on my own. I've looked at all these places. I've reached out. Does anyone do this? You know, that kind of thing. Like do your stuff up front before you ask a very generic question. <laughs> like yes. Because there are resources already out there. So I mean asking asking generic questions like, well, those questions are the hardest to answer. So when somebody contacts me and asks, how did you get started? Or what is your tip for starting a business? I'm like, uh <laughs> I don't even know how to answer that. Or if they say, what printer do you use? I'm like, well, I have like 10 different people that I use in a variety of instances for different things, depending on what I'm doing. Like, what exactly do you want to know? I mean, part of that is understanding the lingo, which Cammie and I will both admit right now, that's very hard because sometimes you just don't know what you're searching for. Like you might see that there's white printing on a clear substance, but you might not understand that that clear substance can go by multiple names, such as acrylic, uh, vinyl, vellum, like all these different types, yeah. these, yeah, like a dick, a, you need like a dictionary of some sort, which is honestly kind of what we're doing with the a to z directory (laughs) so you guys will be able to scroll through and be like oh my gosh for vellum or acrylic there's like all these sources and places that i can get this done and that's kind of what we've realized is a huge pain point for people is you guys sometimes just don't even know where to start or like when i was starting calligraphy i didn't even like know it was called a nib like you have to like learn some of these things first, which can be hard. Yeah. And the the directory also like not just, okay, so here's where you get acrylic pieces, but also what about printing? Here's where you get acrylic printers. Like there's different nuances for each different thing, you know, like wood sign materials are different than getting printed stuff on wood signs. So yeah, lots of different ways to look at things. And those are all covered in the directory. It literally is so comprehensive. It's amazing. Kimmy <laughs> has like worked her butt off, guys. <laughs> she is going in there and like linking everything. Like it's not just a list. Like everything is linked to like the exact page of each website that you would need to like inquire for this sort of stuff. So if you're looking for envelopes or pocket folds or these certain things, Cami has linked the exact spot. It's not just like a website link. Um there's little additional notes and things with it too, but oh, yeah, little sneaky notes about like why I use this vendor or, or like something you might not realize firsthand just by looking at their page. Um, and also we have these cute little birthday cake icons that we put next to each vendor that we actually have used for this project. So you can, um, in the private Facebook group that comes with your membership, you can ask us questions specifically about that vendor. And if we haven't used it within that Facebook group, hopefully someone else has, and we can you know, review it and talk about it, make sure it's a good fit. So yeah. if they suck, we're taking them off the list. So <laughs> Yeah, we're kind of, we're still discussing that a little bit, but kind of like a three, three strikes you're out policy. Like if people are having bad experiences, we obviously don't want to recommend somebody. Um, yeah. Oops, I just bumped my mic. I don't know if anyone heard that. Anyway, <laughs> um, anyway I wanted to loop back to, to this note of collect as many samples as possible. That's something that you wrote down. So how do people even go about doing that from different printers or companies? Oh, yeah. Well, of course, if you're going in person, always ask to see a sample pack. And most of the time, they're willing to just give it to you. And then, of course, when you're looking at these different printers within the directory, we're giving you a full list. But we want you to go out and make the next step to make sure it's a good fit. So going and ordering their sample packs or asking for the sample packs, getting them sent to you. And just being able to touch and feel the paper in person. I mean, you have to do this. Like, mm-hmm. I think that was something I 
I desperately needed needed to do at the beginning. Um, I was kind of just blindly picking something that sounded good. But I wish I had ordered more sample packs. But then after a few months, I went sample pack crazy. And I have boxes upon boxes of paper samples to prove it. Um, so... <laughs> Um, so I found the like now I narrowed down. I only use a handful of different papers, but it's nice to know what's out there and to be um, educated in your industry and know being able to walk the walk and talk the talk. Like you know what types of papers are out there. You're not you know you're not just like well I guess we can use this crinkly one. I don't know. <laughs> like, right. <laughs> yeah, you know what, what there is and what there isn't, and what you can offer, what works with your printing methods. Um, and honestly, having all those sample packs, like they might cost money up front, but it's it's a business expense. Like you're a business, you need to invest in this and know what you're talking about and being able to offer the best product possible. So get those samples, y'all. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, some printing companies will even send samples for free if you want to see what they're doing. And I've had printing companies contact me before because they want my business um, and they send me sample packs. So you never know. But I know that like for different wax seal vendors, depending on who you're using, you have to pay for a sample pack from them. Um, it really varies company from company. So just doing your research to kind of figure yeah. that out will be really beneficial. I, yeah, I've ordered a bunch. Of, I just ordered recently a bunch of ribbon samples just to make sure I can see the color in person because sometimes it's hard to see the color online. I ordered samples from a bunch of different mug places before I chose the one I went with. Um, tea towel samples. I mean, I, some things you can't get a sample for like an enamel pen, but because <laughs> they have to do them like such um, higher quantities. But I mean, you could order something from someone who's used that company or um, you know, if they have something on their website for sale, you can just go ahead and order like a pen off the just something they've done. Um, so yeah, I always try to order samples of everything. I want to see the finished product before I start u- offering it in my business, um, just to make sure it's a good fit because I'm not going to offer no junk. Okay. So. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> what I love about my sample stuff now too is I can sit down on the floor and I'll pull a ton of stuff out. I'll pull out paper sample books, ribbon sample sheets, wax seal sample packs, all these different things. And I'll just like sit there and look through stuff for inspiration and think about if I paired this with that, how would that look for a client? Like it brings it to life so much. And as artists, so many of us are visual and we love seeing that. And then you can always use those elements too. If you take a photo of that and insert it in Photoshop, your clients can see the product as well. Um, Like wax seals, making a mock-up of a wax seal for a client is super important. You want them to see kind of what it looks like. (laughs) So you either can take one kind of from the vendor's website to use it as an example, or you take a picture of like the stuff you have in person. So this all comes back and is super helpful down the road to once you're doing a lot of work with clients. Yeah, that is so smart. I love that. Yeah, you could make your own mock-ups using that same exact paper texture so it would show through Mm -hmm. in your styled mock-up. So Oh, there are people that do the most beautiful mock-ups of all time. Let's see, Shasta Bell Calligraphy, uh, McBride Calligraphy, they do a lot of handmade Mm -hmm. paper organic stuff. And they've taken pictures of their own handmade paper from the companies they love and they like upload it and edit it and use it for mock-ups. It's amazing. I'm like blown away. that is awesome. (laughs) (laughs) Oh yeah, because that's it's way harder to come up with a digital mock-up of handmade paper than it is regular piece of paper so and you can also send these samples um to your brides if they are the kind of touchy-feely where they need to see the paper in person you can send these to them as well right absolutely so many uses okay let's touch base on things we look for when choosing a printer and then we'll talk more about the directory so yeah perfect Um, we still have like a whole page of notes it's so funny we have so much on this topic I know. I really had a lot to say on this, but we'll just, I'm not going to go super in depth with these, I guess. But some of the things we look for when choosing a printer, obviously capabilities is a no brainer. Like what type of work do they do? Do they have multiple things or just one thing really well? Like that's why you might be using like four or five different vendors for an invitation suite. You know, you're not just going to one place and being like, here's my project. Right. (laughs) Um, So you have to learn how to pair all these together. And so just looking at different capabilities they offer. Um, And then, for instance, some of the things like I use a mug printer for just like one off mugs, but then I also have a different mug printer for wholesale orders. If I'm doing like a higher 
a higher minimum. So, um, but the qual- the product and quality looks the same. So thinking about those types of things, like minimum orders, like maybe the project's going to be slightly different with a different vendor. Yeah. And then, of course, quality. We don't judge a printer by its website. Some printers just, they just aren't blessed in the website department, but they do <laughs> great work. So that's why you got to get samples and see the final product for yourself. Um, and customer service, Elizabeth, you know all about that. <laughs> oh my gosh, guys. And I have a lot of stories from friends too, um, like horror stories of letterpress printing being printed the wrong color on handmade paper. You know, these are the types of things that make or break a client vendor relationship. And that can be really hard too if you've worked with a vendor for a while and then um, something happens and you're like, I'm never going to go back, <laughs> which unfortunately <laughs> uh, did happen for me this past fall with kind of what I was talking about earlier, where I had to go to a local printer and literally they had to print it for me that day because there was something that was lost along the lines of communication. And what I was realizing with this company, the more that I would talk to the salesperson and the owner on the phone, the more I realized that they didn't have like the systems in place on the back end to stay organized. And if you guys know anything about me by now, you should know that I'm like an organization and systems freak. Like that's how my brain works. (laughs) So when I can see and understand that someone's systems are falling apart on the back end, I'll know that they don't have like the capabilities to operate correctly and continue to deliver me a good product. So Yeah. You lose your trust, basically. Totally. Um, Like, I totally lost trust. And there were, like, two things that happened. One thing was that they had recommended to, if I double, if I duplexed an RSVP card, to actually print it just a little smaller so that it wouldn't get stuck in the envelope. Because if you duplex it in a four-bar RSVP envelope, that's actually a super tight fit. So it was really funny. They recommended that I should print it smaller. I said, okay, that's a great idea. It was by, like, an eighth of an inch. And they printed it the normal size. So I was like, uh, (laughs) you guys recommended this to me. I said, yes, you still printed it the normal size. Like, where was that lost in communication? And, you know, when they got on the phone with me, because I called them to address it, they were giving me a really super long explanation on how it happened. And I was like, I don't care. Like, it's wrong. Like, I don't want to hear, like, where you lost the thread or what happened the thing is like, I'm, I'm doing this for a client too. Like I'm your client, but I have to deliver to my clients as well. Um, and then later that fall, it was the whole timeline with this map folio that I was printing where I had been in touch with them to say I was going to be submitting the file and I like needed it in hand by this date. And basically I found out that it would be like arriving at its destination the day of the wedding, which was too late. Like it needed to be two days before the wedding. So something was lost along the lines there. And I said, after that, I was like, you know what? Like you guys sent me free samples. You did all of this stuff. Like I can tell that you were probably trying your best, but it's not the right fit. Like I can't risk this again. Yeah. Well, the thing is with that story, just oh, this makes me so mad is that you emailed them like 42 times being like, hey, because they would be like, oh, yeah, it's going to ship today. And you're like, can I have the tracking? Can I have the tracking? And that was like five days later, like, oh, here's the yes. tracking. And it shipped that day. And so they were just they were fudging. Lying. They were kind of fudging. They were kind of lying and yeah. acting as if it had been shipped when it hadn't. So that's when I scream cried is when I finally got the tracking and they were blaming their shipping software and all this stuff. And I was like, I don't care like I don't care honestly <laughs> like, we sh- we should could name this episode times that Elizabeth scream cried because <laughs> that is <laughs> all this is <laughs> thankfully guys that really doesn't happen very much like it doesn't it's just those I'm just ha- happening to tell you two of the times that it has See, happened. if you don't get access to the A to Z directory, you're going to scream cry all the time. So do you want that in your life? No. <laughs> no, no one should have to go through this. Oh, the turmoil. So oh, yeah, that uh, printer won't be on our directory, guys. So don't yeah. worry. We're saving yeah, you please. some pain. <laughs> saving you some scream cries. Okay. So. <laughs> Sorry, that was long. Um, um, another thing we look for when um, sussing out vendors is ease of ordering. So this is kind of along the same lines of customer service. I always, I really prefer when it's very easy for me to order, just simply uploading my completed file to a website and then it comes to my house in like two days and I love that. 
Um, or some places that I work with, I have to email them and ask for a quote. Like there's not pricing just directly on there, which is fine, but I expect there to be a pretty speedy response. And I like to have one person to work with at that company, mm-hmm. which um, a lot of my vendors, I do have one person that can just email something and be like, hey, I've got this coming up. And they're like, great. And they put together the quote and whatnot, um, which is really nice. But if a printer is taking like five days to even get back to you with a quote and you're working with a, a client and you're like, well, I'm trying to move forward with this to see if you're going to be a good fit for this project. Um, yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> so um, yeah, having those ordering systems in place, I totally look for that when um, finding a vendor that I want to w- work with. Like for my nail pins, I, I tested out, I emailed about six different places until I found one that I felt was a good fit. Um, because the person was just like really easy to work with and answered all my bajillion questions that I had about <laughs> ordering them and design wise. He was so nice and helpful and they're on the list too. I highly recommend this place. I'm and um, hometown, yeah, which is super fun. The they're what? From my hometown, so cool. right? The people you do that enamel yes. pins. I was so excited when I yeah. saw that. I was like, oh my gosh, that's where I grew up. <laughs> And they were they were slightly more expensive than another company I was going to work with. I even got like the design. Like we were almost at the production phase with this other company. But then I, I just started realizing I'm like, I think the other quality is going to be better. And I trusted my gut and went with the other one. So yeah, I'm really happy with my decision. They're just so nice. And when I need to reorder something, oh, thank you. When I need to reorder something, I just email my my person. I'm just like, hey, David, what's up? I need a hundred more of these pens. And he just sends me a link and I order it. And it's super easy. Like, love it. So. That makes me very happy. And then let's see what else. Um, I also look at um, industry reputation and how long they've been in biz. So just making sure they're not just like popped up new on the market and they have no idea what they're doing or don't have their systems in place. <clears throat> cough, cough, someone else we know. <laughs> so knowing that they have a good good reputation in the industry and knowing, um, asking other stationers, artists, whoever, if they've used them before and had a good experience is important to me. So this is going to be really helpful with our Facebook group for the A to Z directory. So you can ask, hey, have you used this person before? What was your experience like with them? Um, And that way we can kind of help each other out on who has a good reputation, who has a great customer service. And that'll be awesome. I'm so excited about the Facebook group. I'm super (laughs) excited too because they're even though the A to Z directory is like super comprehensive, we're adding notes and all this stuff. Like you guys are still going to have questions about the vendors and how we like them and that stuff where we really want to come aside you and be able to answer some of those in a more direct way Um, and in a way where you know, that community of people is all part of the A to Z directory. So there's hopefully that trust there of sharing and talking about stuff like this uh, because you guys are going to be members and have signed up to be part of it. Yeah, I'm really envisioning this being an open forum where we could all openly discuss our vendors and because we're all sharing the same directory, which even though we have the same, like we're all sharing the same directory, we might not be using the same vendors from it. And that was also really important to me is that we're not just giving you guys a list of here's who we use and creating a bunch of like, you know, many Cammie and Elizabeth's who have the same looking product. Like we're finding (laughs) all these different vendors that, you know, might be a good fit for someone and might not be a good fit for someone else because you guys have your own design aesthetic. And we're very aware of that and want it to be like that. So of course, we're not trying out every single vendor on the list, but they are trusted and known. And so we want this to be like almost the Yelp for um, yeah. vendors in our Facebook group, like just reviews, posting final products. Like I'm very excited about this. It's going to be helpful for us too, honestly. I like, just can't wait to see just, what you guys create. Like it's going to be so great. Oh my gosh. I know. Like we are welcoming posts about, hey, here's the final product of what I got from here. Or here's the custom umbrellas and custom socks I got with my <laughs> cat's face on them. Like, I mean, I'm probably going to make like a custom umbrella at this point now just because now I know where to get one I know (laughs) I really want to make one too because it's been so rainy in Georgia lately it's just not even cool um (laughs) oh gosh I was gonna say something else about the Facebook group in the directory oh I remember um (laughs) I just want to like tell you guys that is Cammie and I have been building this we've kind of been talking about what is uh, the purpose here? What are we trying to achieve? How are we trying to help you guys? And when it comes down to it, we want you guys to have to search less and create more. We want to be putting the resources in front of you to give you that access because it's kind of the missing 
puzzle piece of the equation almost is you have this beautiful idea uh, for a product or a greeting card, or you want to print invitations for a client. Um, and maybe you even have the client, but the missing middle piece is you don't know how to get it done. And that's what this resource is for you um, to help you get it done and to be successful doing it as well. Yes. And that's why the directory covers literally everything from A to Z. Like, I mean, if we think of something else, I'll put it on there. But pretty much every single product I've ever seen or thought about is on this directory for someone you can get it done with and manufacture it and get it printed and ready to go. Yeah. So yeah, it's going to be... What'd you list? Burgi? Did I say that correctly? Oh, Burgi. Yeah, Burgi's. I just I did that for a bride where you did custom Burgi's, which if you don't know what a Burgi is, because I totally didn't, I had to look <laughs> it up before I called her. They're like a super cool Cape Cod boating couple. Um, So they're getting, they're like these little pennant flags that go on your boat. And I guess everyone has like a specific Burgi for your boat. So we did one with like their monogram and it's, it is like custom for them. So it's going to be part of their crest. It's so cute. But yeah, Burgies, who knew? They're on there. So who <laughs> a couple different knew? places. <laughs> yep, I know. Craziness. See, stuff you didn't even think of will be on there. Oh my gosh, totally. I mean, even for Cami and I, like building out this together has been so fun. Cami said to me yesterday, she was like, this is so cool because if I forget where something gets printed, I can just come and look at this because now it's actually all in one place. I was like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, and it's going to keep growing too, which I freaking love that, obviously. I mean, it's obviously going to just keep being updated every time, new, every time we find a new vendor that we love that's maybe we haven't used before. We don't have to send out a new email with a new PDF. It's going to always be updating with our notes on there too. Like maybe one of the vendors, they start offering something else. I'll add that under under the notes and be like, hey, they now offer, you know, this acrylic printing or whatever. Mm-hmm. So be sure to take advantage of that. So just so excited. I mean, oh yeah, gosh. for for those of you that maybe like missed out on the explanation somewhere along the way, this is a live web page that you have membership access to through our website. So it's super easy for Cami and I to go into the back end to add something or remove something if that is the case that we need to. Um, and like Cami talked about earlier, the people that we have specifically used, they have little cake emojis next to them because of course, uh, this birthday of Ash, <laughs> we got to put those little emojis in there. So if you guys want to know like literally the exact ones we use, it will be specified. If it's a two cake vendor, it means we both use them. <laughs> so Double cake, double cake. Anyways, <laughs> it's just so cool that we can keep updating it when we want. I just love that. Okay, you know what? Since we're talking so much about the directory, let's just talk about how you can actually become a member. Um, so right now in launch week, February 18th through 22nd, right? Yep. Um, it is $97 for your yearly membership. This is the lowest price it will ever be. So it's only $97. You get grandfathered in at this price. So 97 bucks a year um, to be a part of the membership directory. So you'll have the A to Z directory access. You can log in anytime. And then, of course, access the Facebook group. And if you, um, after this week, it, membership is still available. It's just going up to 147 after this week. So this is honestly like a no-brainer to get in on it this week. You save 50 bucks, which is great. And you're grandfathered in at that rate. So Yeah, I mean, this is the prime time to be doing it in the best time. And the great thing is, is after maybe after this year, maybe six months in, you're like, okay, you know what? I found the vendors that I love and I don't need this anymore. Like, of course you guys can cancel your membership if you need to, and you'll have access to the end of the plan and the term that you paid for. Um, cause we understand like, maybe there aren't some of you that are, are going to want to pay for it for three years. But the point is like, when you pay for it, you get access for a whole year. Like all the changes we make, all the things we add, you have access to that Facebook community, it's going to be invaluable in so many ways. Um, search more, yeah. cre- search less, create more. <laughs> That's what we want you guys to do. Yes, exactly. And then of course, um, here's the link where you can go get it. If you're like, holy bananas, I need this right now. It's um, bizbirthdaybash.com slash directory. So it lives on our website. You have a cute little login. So you can just go sign up right there and get access immediately and be part of our Facebook group. So yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm just, I am literally so excited right now. I'm like trying to calm down. <laughs> I know. There's a, a lot happening. Um, 
And this is a big resource and we're doing it in a way that hasn't been done before. Um, so lots of new different things and we want you guys to be a part of it. We want to be able to answer your questions and talk to you guys and have a place to discuss all of these different things. Um, yeah, answer your questions too, because in DMs, it's we don't want to answer. Where do you get this printed? We want to be able to talk to you one on one in this Facebook group. Talk to other people, not just us. Like we're not the experts of everything, you know. There's other people who are going to be great. So this is we're going to be stronger as a community who can all share our resources and be open about them. Get rid of that secrecy veil. That's you know, kind of when you get those intrusive DMs. But we won't have that here because we're all one big happy family. <laughs> I know. I really hope so. I mean, we definitely have like, it's not a free for all. Like we have guidelines for the Facebook group, but there's not, it's kind of those typical things of like, don't be rude. Um, (laughs) all that kind of stuff. Okay guys. So last point for the vendor guide is like Cammie said, it's $97. You're grandfathered in. So it's $97 every year you want to keep it. That comes out to, if you do the math, it's $8 a month, which Cami and I were talking about this earlier. It's like, if you want to buy a new paintbrush a month from the art store, like that's how much it costs, you know? So you could either have 12 new paintbrushes, which is great, (laughs) or or you could have access to this. Um, I don't know if that's the best analogy ever, because I know you guys still need paintbrushes, but we want you guys to think about, about it in that type of way that seriously, the value you're getting here is incredible. So yeah, you guys, super affordable, great value. If you want want in on this, of course, just go to bizbirthdaybash.com slash directory. You can sign up and get instant access. And I think that's all we have for you guys today. So of course, we can't wait to hear what you guys think about the directory and leave us a rating and review for the podcast. And I think that's all we have for this week. We will be seeing you guys on Instagram going crazy because we're literally losing our minds. We're so excited. If if you do have any lingering questions for any reason, our email is super easy. Hello at bizbirthdaybash.com. So you can connect with us there. But otherwise, yeah, I think that's it. All right. See y'all in the Facebook group. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Hey guys, just hopping in to drop you a link real quick. I think we forgot to say it at the end of the episode. So if you are interested in joining the A to Z directory membership, all you have to do is go to www.bizbirthdaybash.com forward slash directory. It's definitely super easy to get to. You'll be able to read all of the features that we have, exactly what we're providing, and see all of the benefits basically of getting a membership. We think this resource is totally totally awesome, especially because of the Facebook group that comes with it. So for this week only, that's February 18th through February 22nd, we are offering $50 off the membership price. It's normally $147, but this week it is $97 and you would be grandfathered into that price. So it's kind of one of those deals you don't want to miss out on. So once again, hop on over to bizbirthdaybash.com forward slash directory.